I had just started my new job at Factory 47, an old, run-down manufacturing plant on the edge of town. It was the kind of place you only saw in horror movies. Tall, grimy windows that let in barely any light, rusted metal beams, and an air of neglect that seemed to permeate everything. The factory had been abandoned for years before a new owner decided to revamp it, and I was part of the new crew tasked with getting it operational again. From the moment I stepped inside, a sense of unease settled over me. The air was thick with the smell of dust and decay, mingling with the acrid scent of old machinery. My footsteps echoed loudly in the vast, empty space, and I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. The foreman, Mr. Jacobs, was a gruff, no-nonsense man who gave us our tasks and sent us on our way with little more than a grunt. I was assigned to work on the assembly line, a long, dark corridor lined with ancient, creaking machinery. The other workers were friendly enough, but there was an unspoken tension in the air. Whispers of strange occurrences and ghostly sightings were common, but most dismissed them as nothing more than rumors. Still, the stories lingered in my mind as I went about my work, my nerves on edge. One evening, I was working late, trying to finish up a task that should have taken an hour, but had stretched into three. The factory was eerily silent, the only sound the occasional creak of metal and the distant hum of machinery. The smell of oil and grease was overpowering, mixing with the musty odor of old fabric and wood. The fluorescent lights flickered overhead, casting unsettling shadows that seemed to move on their own. I was tightening a bolt on one of the machines when I heard it, a soft, almost imperceptible whisper. I froze, my heart pounding in my chest. Who's there? I called out, my voice echoing through the empty factory. There was no response, just the oppressive silence pressing in around me. I shook my head trying to convince myself it was just my imagination and went back to work. But the whispering continued, growing louder and more insistent. It was like a chorus of voices, all speaking at once, their words unintelligible but filled with a sense of urgency. I dropped my wrench, the clatter echoing through the factory, and turned around, my flashlight sweeping across the dark corners. The beam landed on a shadowy figure at the far end of the assembly line. My breath caught in my throat as I stared at the figure, a tall, indistinct shape that seemed to flicker in and out of existence. The air grew colder, and I could feel a chill settling into my bones. The smell of decay was stronger now, mingling with a sweet, sickly odor that made my stomach turn. I wanted to run, to get out of that place as fast as I could but my feet felt rooted to the spot. The figure began to move towards me, its steps slow and deliberate. I could hear the soft shuffle of its feet on the concrete floor, the whispering growing louder with each step. My heart was pounding so hard I thought it might burst out of my chest. I forced myself to move, to back away from the approaching figure, my hands shaking. As I turned to run, the lights flickered and went out, plunging the factory into darkness. Panic surged through me, and I fumbled for my flashlight, my fingers clumsy with fear. When I finally managed to turn it on, the beam cut through the darkness, revealing the figure standing right in front of me. I screamed and stumbled back, the flashlight slipping from my grasp and rolling across the floor. The figure loomed over me, its face shrouded in shadow. The air was filled with the smell of rot and decay, so thick I could taste it. The whispering was deafening now, a cacophony of voices that seemed to come from all around me. I scrambled to my feet and ran, my pulse pounding in my ears. I didn't know where I was going, only that I needed to get away from that thing. The factory was a maze of machinery and dark corridors, and I could hear the figure's footsteps echoing behind me, slow and relentless. I burst into the foreman's office, slamming the door shut behind me. The small room was cluttered with old papers and tools, the smell of mildew and dust heavy in the air. I pressed my back against the door, my breath coming in ragged gasps. The whispering had stopped, but
but I could still feel the figure's presence, a cold, oppressive weight pressing down on me. Suddenly, the door rattled as if something was trying to get in. I held it shut with all my strength, my heart racing. Leave me alone, I shouted, my voice hoarse with fear. The rattling stopped, and for a moment there was only silence. Then I heard it, a soft, mocking laughter echoing through the empty factory. Desperation took hold, and I searched the room for anything I could use as a weapon. My hands closed around a rusty wrench, and I gripped it tightly, my knuckles white. The door creaked open slowly, and I braced myself for whatever was on the other side. But there was nothing. The corridor was empty, the whispering gone. I stepped out cautiously, my heart still pounding. The factory was silent, the oppressive weight lifted. I made my way back to the assembly line, the flashlight's beam cutting through the darkness. As I approached the spot where I had first seen the figure, I noticed something on the floor. It was a photograph, old and faded, showing a group of workers standing in front of the factory. My breath caught in my throat as I recognized the figure at the center, the same shadowy figure that had been haunting me. The whispering returned, soft and insistent, and I felt a chill run down my spine. I dropped the photograph and ran, not stopping until I was outside in the cold night air. The factory loomed behind me, a dark, silent sentinel. I never went back to Factory 47. The stories of hauntings and ghostly sightings were no longer just rumors to me. They were a terrifying reality. The smell of decay and the whispering voices still haunt my dreams, a constant reminder of the night I came face to face with the unknown.